So, let's talk about Ronald the Barbarian. Ronald the Barbarian is one of those few animated films that are actually mostly for adults. Again, a bit similar to Sausage Party. And yes, I do mean as adults because it really has a lot of swearing and gore and then you some on human screens and some bit of uh, sexual and innuendo scenes and even ball, ball jokes. Literally, there are really ball jokes everywhere in the film. Um, and the film itself did not have a great start since since when it, while it was getting released, it, it was a box office bomb. Um, since it was only released in Danish Danish theaters, and it only got like two million dollars, which is quite sad to be fair. Uh, and not many people were praising on this film, you know, since Ron, since IMDb gave around like a six point something, while Rotten Tomatoes gave like a fifty something. So, how, do I feel the same way about this film as the box office and the critics? When going into the story, there is not a whole lot that it represents. And to begin with, it, it mostly starts around like a time where you know, King uh, Karl, 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 I think his name it was, who defeated the villain and gained glory. But however, he got killed and gave ate all his blood to like the barbarians that actually drink it and gain powers. And then, soon enough, we we get into like the uh, present day where we we see like all the barbarians just doing their wacky shenanigans of being tough, while one of them is the weakest, which is Ronald, of course, of course who was held by his own uncle named uh, what was his name? Uh, Gunder. Yeah, Gunder. Who uh, had no parents, and one party they had, and then of course the villains came in and crashed into the party and took all the barbarians, but then. He didn't think Ronald was a barbarian, so it's up to him and the other people they meet up to to save maybe the barbarians and find a way to defeat the villain itself. As of right now, this, the plot itself is not really that interesting. I can even say it's the weakest part of the film. It's that when you take a bigger deep dive into it, it's that it does feel a bit repetitive. If, well, they do get help from some characters, but then it kind of gets interrupted and the same thing goes on and on. Um, and that kind of, and that is probably the uh, big, big problem with the film, and it doesn't really rely much on that story. But now, don't think, think that the, the, the story itself is bad. There are some things in the story that actually does make it good, and that is in the execution. Sure, the plot is, isn't that as good or, or like other anime films out there, especially when you compare it to the good ones. But if what it does is that the execution does it, does it good enough to actually make the story somewhat engaging, even with the action scenes, the character developments, and even the humor, which of course is the type of humor you would find in an adult anime film nowadays. But, but of course, that's basically the only thing that people would, would come and see this film for. And I also forgot to mention that this film was also a parody of Conan, Conan or the Conan or Conan the Barbarian? Yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. So the story isn't really too, too like, uh, too engaging when you think about it in the plot, but it, but the execution does make it work. And as I said at the beginning, it, it, since the execution does well on the animation and, and the action scenes, it also does work well on the characters. And since that had an in the parody that the film was based on, which is called the Barbarian, which I could be right, right this film is mostly centered around Ronald, well, who, unlike the other people, he's basically the weak one and is the only smart man of the group. But he may be seen like the typical outcast type of character who doesn't want to be a Barbarian and wants to go in independent. 
I'll give that Eddie's Andrews Jewel, the guy who played Ronald, did play a good performance as him and does actually slice with some bit of humor and big emotions. And as for the characters that follow him on his journey, the one that actually appears in the first first act is Albert, the guy who was at the beginning with, with the party scene, who is also the the arrow-headed, who's also the uh, clueless-minded type of character who just wants to get laid by a bunch of women, and that's it. And I can honestly say that Albert is the weakest character of the of the film. Mm. Not only is he annoying, the, his jokes aren't really that funny, and and while I did say the humor is hilarious. There are some hu some jokes in the film that come from characters that aren't as great as others, and Elbert is a good example of that. As but the characters that get that did get to appear in even the second act, there's Sandra, uh, the woman who is trying who is trying to like the only way to like marry a a, a man is to like beat them in the, is to let them be the women in the battle, but he can't because she's too strong. Eric, the get the whole homo type character who who guides to the guides the uh, main characters to the adventure who actually does some of the funniest jokes of the film you know, and can also be my favorite. And then there's Bolkazar, so the main villain who wants to take all the barbarians but blood, well only a little bit of the blood and gains pull power as a as a for a big, big demon. And he's honestly quite a threatening and very effective villain that actually takes things a lot quite seriously. I'm not sure there are all the characters, but they don't really do stand much as like Gondor, the t the uncle who takes care of Ronald after who his parents die, uh, Golak, the angel's head, physical muscle man, headed moron, and uh, the Oracle who is the uh, is the uh, hard-headed old man who shows up more than just the typical fortune helper, and the Amazon queen who, and who is it? And the Amazons who honestly he lived their own life and tried to, he was mostly determined to like get men in order to like, speak, like help the god or something in a in a quite uncomfortable way when you think about it. But at least I'll give that the actors did a pretty good performance. That's the characters. Well, I wouldn't say the same for some characters since their lines can get a little annoying and quite corny at times. What would I say? These are bad characters? No. And they do, do show off who they are, and that's cool. But I will say that the bit that the probably be the one that actually gets a lot more of the attention outside of the actors and funny bits is that the animation is surprisingly pretty good for a 2011 anime film that got released in Danish his country in cinemas well the one thing that actually makes this animation quite great is that the, is that the character animation is quite expressive the animation that does show off the character's emotions and it actually plays a lot of fun with the with the movements and whenever they go into shenanigans I also get that the backgrounds do actually Give us some nice looks on, on describing where the characters are, like like the the place where, where the main characters find the Oracle ads, and even the, the that one place where it had the Amazon women. And, but then, and, and also I couldn't forget about four castles there. And the effects are actually pretty, actually a pretty good taste with with the most of the effects that they use. This were like fire and some bit of water, and maybe a bit of like rocks as well. Well, and I can definitely tell that the action scenes are the highlights of the animation, since they do give out some very intense moments, especially whenever the characters are facing off with certain enemies, is that actually do give his out some really effective scenes. But now, yes, and even though the character animation is quite expressive, if it is kind of limited for an animation for an anime film that its budget was around like 30 million dollars which can be noticeable how it's quite limited anyways, but I'll keep it that aside since the animators do actually play a lot with the character animation with, and it actually shows a lot more expressive movements than the, than the uh, times where they just chill out limited movements 
However, my one, my biggest criticism with the animation, outside of the uh, limited movements, is that the character designs don't feel like they're the type to take seriously. I mean, since I know they are mostly like there to be like used for like mostly comedies and look like they came out of the uh, Golden Age of cartoon, mostly with the Barbarian cartoons, of course. But they don't really look like they are the type of characters we should take seriously and mostly serve as jokes. Oops. And even if and even if like you said that, I won't say the designs are bad, it's just that it's hard to take them seriously. See for a film like this that really has like gore, action scenes and even some pretty effective moments. And, but will I say this is a w I won't say it's the worst animation. Again. It may have a 13 million dollar budget, budget, which is quite low for anime features like this, but I'll give that the animators did do the job pretty well here. One of the Barbarian is a, is a quite of a decent experience I would give it, and while the after story doesn't, the plot itself doesn't really give out much like the type of story you you find in most anime films and some characters that do not give out if are so much impressions. But the execution nails it. Nails it with nails it with some comedy that is actually pretty hilarious, some very strong and actually pretty good animation, especially for a 13 million dollar budget of a type of film like this, and some actors that do give out good performance that do that does give a bit of personality to the characters themselves. And I would really make, recommend this to everyone, especially for like people that are really under maybe 14 or even just kids in general well well if you're the type of guy, type of guy who is also adult and love adult anime films then you can definitely enjoy this film and i can even say that most of the like just like most of the film i review even and how they were flawed this one film kind of felt decent in my eyes and that's why i'm giving this the zero good who, who, who never wondered that such a small anime film like this could actually be a decent experience? Oh wait, <coughs> hoodwinked. Next time on Carlos Pass Reviews is... Good and what?